Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. And today I want to challenge you, my friends, that many people are always talking about trust. But do we not know God never told us to trust each other? Mm -mm. That word trust means to have a bold confidence, security, reliance of the ability or the strength of another. Now, the Bible, contrary to popular belief, it tells us this about trust. It tells us trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. That's Proverbs chapter three, verse five through six. Jeremiah, the prophet of God said this. He said, thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns from the Lord. Ooh, we gonna come back to Jeremiah. Look what the other prophet Micah said. Put no trust in a neighbor, have no confidence in a friend, guard the doors of your mouth from her lies in your arms. In other words, hmm, watch out. Some of us talk about you meet these people and you're like so in love. Yeah, you're in her arms, trusting her while you in them arms that you ain't supposed to be in or that man's arms. Mm -mm. He telling you, don't do that. Proverbs chapter 118, eight, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. My friends, I'm sorry, but I got to sound this alarm. The reason why many of us are being destroyed emotionally and spiritually because we lack understanding. The Bible says in all thy getting, get understanding. God wants you to understand why I don't care if it is your spouse, if it is your auntie or your kids, you are not supposed to trust in them for your stability as you move through and journey through this life. And this is why many people end up going crazy. They end up committing crimes. They end up becoming homicidal and suicidal because the ex cheated. Then he or she get married and that ex cheat. But God is saying, when a spouse, let me just give you this for free, my friends. When your spouse cheat on you, it's not about you. I know many of us believe it's us. No, 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 no. That person does not revere or have respect for his or her vows because they do not love nor respect God. You just happen to be a casualty. And listen, friends, until you understand that, you're going to keep moping around, living in all that darkness and that unforgiveness. Now, some of us refuse to forgive. You are, je listen, friends, you are rolling the dice with your own soul because Christianity, look. It, 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 it is built on the bedrock of forgiveness. God even said he would turn you over to the tormentors if you don't forgive. So now the enemy done trap, he done set that trap for you, my friends. And here you are full of rage, anger, and hatred for your ex-spouse. He or she done went on with their life. And here you are, my friend, drinking from the cup of the enemy. It's called unforgiveness. Why? Because you trusted that man. You trusted that woman. And now you are left with the kids. Some of you women, you've been left with those kids. God is like, what you mad for? This is common to man. You got to pull up your bootstraps, sis. You ain't the first one that's been left with three, four kids. God said, come on, come on, come to me. Come to me. I'm going to give you grace. And I'm going to help you train those babies how to love me, how to love holiness and righteousness. And they will, when they grow up, they'll be taking care of you at a very early age, my friend. Train them, love them. Do not take out what happened between you and that man on those babies. God say, come to me, trust me. 
with your whole heart. Don't lean to your own understanding because your mind will play tricks with you, my friend. But I'm trying to tell us today, God ain't never told us to trust no husband or no wife. In fact, it was Jesus that told us, my friends, in Luke chapter 14, he said, you cannot be my disciple if you do not hate your mother, your father, or your kids. That word hate in the Greek is translated to love less. It doesn't mean to hate with disdain and disgrace. Mm -mm. It means to love less. In other words, God's saying, I got to be first. I got to have preeminence. So if something goes down in that relationship, my friend, you will still continue to follow your shepherd. You're not going to throw your life away and end up making that, that betrayal because you trusted them. Now you're going to make that an idol. God say, no, it's time to tear down these idols in our hearts from these people we have trusted with our whole hearts, not God, but the ex. Your co-worker, you trusted in that job, friend. You trusted you would always be there. And now you are in the dundrums because you got served that pink slip. And God said, you wasn't trusting me. You were trusting in that job. And God is trying to, 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 to bring us back into a place of calibration, to bring us back in alignment that he must have preeminence. See, Jesus gave us those commandments, my friend, to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and your strength, not your neighbor. Then he said, love your neighbor as yourself. And how can you love a neighbor if you don't love yourself? That's why a lot of us are so mean. We mean. We be saying all kinds of inappropriate stuff. We know we just backbiting and God is saying, you're bitter. That's why you say the things you say. That's why you sit in all that depression because you've been trusting man. And God is saying, tear that altar down. Let us go to Jeremiah again. Thus says the Lord, cursed is the man or woman that trust in their husband, their job, their auntie, their granddad, their grandma, who trust and man and makes flesh his arm. That's where you lean in. Whose heart turns from the Lord. It's so many teachings out here, friends, that is absolutely anti-Christ. They're against God. God knows the propensity of man is sin, selfishness, self-denial, and self-deceit. That's why you should not trust man. Friends, listen. As I close this exhortation, I gave you the scriptures, Proverbs 1, 18 and 8, Micah 7, chapter 7, verse 5, Jeremiah 17, verse 5, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. Friends, I could have went on and on and on and on of all the scriptures that tell us don't trust each other like that. So many of us, you got to get uh, the mind to, to be in a relationship, in a loving relationship, but you can't get but so close and far in my heart because what did God tell us to do? Guard it. He said, guard your heart with all diligence. Oh, my friends, you got to know when to... You got to know when to release truth, to push and back these people from having chains on your heart. This includes your children. God is saying, we have made idols out of one another. Don't trust no man. Trust God. Lean on him. Just because a person is always there now doesn't mean they'll be there this time next year. 
Just because you are making that money right now and that job seems to be the big dream job doesn't mean this time next year you're going to be there, my friends. God say, I want you to glorify me. I want you to lean on me. Because I am your father. I'm your Abba. And we know Abba in the Greek means father. He's saying, I'm your source. I'm your strength. I am that I am. Come on, friends. Some of us got to denounce this propensity of being Velcro. You are Velcro to people. And you cannot grow into maturation until you deal with the situations that you have caused in your life because you are leaning on flesh. You are making that boyfriend and that husband your God. And when that relationship is trouble, you don't have no peace. You don't have no joy. You up, you down, you high, you low. You can't move on with life. You're stuck because your arm has been that individual, that relationship. Some of you, you trusted that your grandmom or granddad would always be here. And when they died, you have cursed God in your heart because you really did not love God with your whole heart. You love grandma. In other words, you love the gift more than the giver. God is the giver of life, my friends. And when he allows a person to come out of the earth, you, you and I must make peace with that. Because, my friends, idolatry, you ain't going to have no peace, no joy, no nothing. Because God wants to be first. And we have to understand that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. It comes from God. Every good and perfect gift. But we give all the glory for every relationship, all the provision that comes through one another. We give God all the glory. Now, am I saying walk around being paranoid? No. But the Bible says Jesus trusted himself to no man because he knew what was in man. And we have to become like our Lord and Savior, especially if you feel the tug of God to begin doing good works and preaching Christ and challenging your fellow man to come out of sin and find reconciliation through repentance in Jesus Christ. Oh, my friend, you, you got to understand God wants you to trust him every day to, to walk with people and love on people, but you, 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 you wear people loosely. You're not paranoid. Don't get this twisted now, but you understand that. Hear me as I close this exhortation. Every person that you meet, and we hear this saying, come for a season and a reason. That season may only be 30 days and they're gone. And we love on them. We bless them. We don't curse them. But my friend, you got to understand every person you meet has the potential to do exactly what they did to our Messiah, to Jesus. They will sing Hosanna today and crucify you tomorrow. So we do not get comfortable leaning on flesh. We thank Jesus, but we wear each other loosely and we practice forgiveness, but we wear one another loosely. Because if you don't and that person offends you or betray you, you ready to <laughs> you put too much trust right there, friends. Because no one should pull you into that space where you are holding grudges. You're sitting up thinking about how you're going to get back at them. You got a spirit of revenge on you. And unforgiveness, my friends, is the worst. It is poison to the soul because it what it is is revenge that you have not fulfilled, but you really want to hurt these people. That's why you won't forgive them. So it comes inside of you. It's like drinking poison, but you expect them to die. Why? Because you put your trust right there. That's why. And that's sin. Because God has commanded us to love him 
with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. Nobody shall have preeminence but him. And we will find our walks with God will become easier, more joyful. Amen. God bless you. He or she that has an ear, let them hear what the Holy Ghost just told us. I love you, my friend. Till next time.